In section 8, it's all about additional supporting functions. We're going to take a look at how to automate ODI object creation using Groovy. We talk about impact and data lineaging. We'll have some insight into ODI studio enhancements like shortcuts, syntax highlighting and so on. If you have to develop thousands of interfaces or other ODI objects with similar transformations in it, there will be a point in time where you think about automated creation of those objects. The best in a parameterized way. ODI offers various ways to do so. If you're familiar with Java, you can use the Java SDK API coming along with ODI. It's a quite comprehensive and complete set of classes and methods to work on them. This is also a known way to integrate other applications with ODI. For example, portals, enterprise business suite or SAP or whatever. Nevertheless, for those of you not as familiar with Java, there's another way starting from ODI 11116. Groovy. It not only sounds better, but also is a more scripting related way to automate things in ODI. You have Groovy Editor integrated in ODI Studio, which you can always reach by clicking on Tools, Groovy and selecting whatever you want from the Groovy menu. New script, open script, save script and so on. I just created one script here. You'll have to at least get a little bit familiar with the Java SDK as Groovy uses exactly the same classes and all that. So before starting with Groovy, you should have an intensive read on the SDK documentation. The SDK documentation comes along with the normal ODI documentation. So as you can see here, you have to import all classes necessary to work with the various objects in ODI. For example, the class oracle.odi.interfaces.interactive.support.interactive interface helper with actions is the helper class to create an interface. What my Groovy script should do is, it should create an interface based upon a source and a target table. It should use a knowledge module depending on the data warehouse layer I want the data to be loaded into. And it should have some special columns filled with specific expressions in the target mappings. For this, I define multiple tables containing the necessary information needed in the interface. So I have one table holding the source target table, which is the ODI control table here. As you can see, very easy. And it also contains the data models and knowledge module here, as you can see. So the next table is holding the knowledge modules, which are defined pair data warehouse layer and this one here is holding the special columns I want to have added in my various mappings. So that's it so far and what the Groovy script is doing is after all the classes are imported it really connects to my database. You see it here and then it loads all everything from the ODI control table it loads all the columns from the ODI table. It loads the knowledge module definition here from the knowledge module table and so on and so forth. And then afterwards, some actions are happening. So you see, it's really a scripting language. If you have done some scripting, you will understand it. So that's fine. Syntax and all is not too tricky. As mentioned, if you're able to script, you're able to use Groovy. Just one tip for the Groovy developing. I would recommend to do it in an external editor and with syn some syntax highlighting in, in Groovy and then just copy it over to the ODI Groovy editor. Uh, this ODI Groovy editor sometimes really, really is slow. As you can see, a script makes life a little easier. It's even possible to access certain menus from within the ODI studio, but what's in fact happening in the background with a script is that you can really generate things in an automated way. So you can really create a whole ODI development from some definition tables. If you have all that together, you can do that with one click. In the next chapter, we talk about impact and data lineaging.